Tonight, these handkerchiefs that represent the sick and afflicted all out through the country. Thou remains God and cannot fail to answer prayer when it is made with sincerity and faith. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will bless these people. May they recover from their diseases and afflictions. May these handkerchiefs be symbols of this meeting tonight and the faith that we offer thee from the depths of our heart. Grant it, Lord. May every power of sickness that holds the people, may it have to turn loose as soon as the handkerchief touches their body. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Dipples. Just a little later, serious hospital condition, man, very serious, was just brought here that couldn't wait, just had to be taken right then from the hospital and very, very, very sick. I said to the man, do you believe, sir? He said, I, I was comfortable in the hospital, but I've been waiting in agony for you. I just believe that God's going to heal him and let him get well, go home, be well now for his glory. Tonight, I just want to take just a few moments of time just to catch the feeling of the meeting. And then we're going to pray for the sick. Bring a prayer line right through like we said we would do. Promise. And now tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock is the businessman's breakfast. I think that's right, Brother Shakarin. I'm certainly glad to have Brother Shakarin here with us tonight on the platform. Brother Minor Oregon Bright somewhere in the meeting. And also Brother Bonham. Real good friends of mine has traveled practically the, part of the bigger part of the world with me and me. And tomorrow morning there's to be a businessman, the full gospel businessman's uh, chapter established here in your city. I think it's an asset. And I think it's, uh, I'm highly elated over it myself to know that it'll be another cause for the kingdom of God, another cause to help out. And businessmen, as I said last night, we, we ministers, how I, I never even know Brother Shores hardly until this meeting, and we get together and talk. We have things in common. It's the kingdom of God, and we love to get together and talk these things. Ministers has fellowship. We belong to different organizations and things, which that doesn't bother us. We're glad that the grace of God looks over all of that. And this, we, but then businessmen, some of them come in and one's a mechanic, the other one has an automobile business, another in a dairy business. They don't say to one another, well, you are not a dairyman and you're not in it. They just have fellowship one with another. See? And I think they've got things in common and it's good for them to talk it over. They never come, to, they don't come now to take the place of the church. They only come to add to the church, to help the church in the great struggle. May the Lord bless is my prayer. Our brother Williams announced the other night that they didn't have room for the ladies. I'm sorry about that because the ladies really attend meetings, you know, but I'll tell you the next one. And I'll tell you, that I, I, I like to come to Phoenix with the ministers, and then this will make another thing I have to come to Phoenix for, for this breakfast once in a while. And I'll speak for them everywhere. And then you ladies are come right on down then, and we'll just get our hands in a honey jar, you know. Have a good time in the Lord. Now, as it's growing late, I just want a few minutes because I'm sure that it's hard to teach behind David Duplicis. And he has already, no doubt, given you enough gospel message tonight that would satisfy the, the entire audience. But that I would just get the feel of the crowd. I want to give just a few words of reading out of St. Luke, the first chapter. If you would like to turn to this chapter, you who are keeping the chapters down then tomorrow night, the Lord willing, we want three healing services tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday night till we get the crowds all finished through the, the lines. And we can't get them all through in one night, but we intend to do our very best to get them through anyhow, our best. So you pray for us. And now uh, Sunday morning will be at your own church of your choice, and you visitors here, find one of these fine churches here in Phoenix, the church that you go to, your own denomination, 
As many ministers that attend this meeting here would be glad to have you at their services for Sunday morning. How many ministers are here? Raise up your hands all around everywhere. I want you to see how many ministers is in the building. Look at there. That's the preachers. Thirty or forty of them may be sitting in the building tonight. How thankful we are for these fine men of God and women of God who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in this type of ministry. Let us begin reading now in the first chapter of St. Luke and beginning at the 35th verse. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which is born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary answered and said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Let's just once more pray, if you will. Lord, now we have sang songs tonight. I never got the opportunity to sing it with the people, only a hum a little, only believe as I was coming to the pulpit. Prayers has been made, the Bible's been read. Lord, speak to us tonight through thy word to continue the message that we've already heard. We pray that then the Holy Spirit will come and get into the message tonight and will bring Christ real to our hearts. We hear in the paper where those Muslims laid before Mr. Billy Graham those thirty incurables and challenged him. Oh, Lord God, there's still a God that lives and answers by fire. We pray the Heavenly Father to be with Billy Graham as he's ministering over there in the fields where only those who walk in those tracks. Many times thy servant has tried to say to the people, it's all right here in America, but don't try that demon land there unless you know what you're talking about. For they are ready to challenge the Spirit of God. Lord, thou art still God and has proved every time that you were God. Give your ser servants courage to believe you, Lord. Thou art God. If you're not the same God, then you wasn't God at all. But we know that thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever, and nothing can ever change thee. Thou art the eternal and everlasting God. Speak to us tonight, Lord Jesus, while we think on thy word. We ask it in your name and for your sake. Amen. I believe that the sun had already come up and was bathing across the Galilean skies, drawing up the fragrance of the roses where the night had been quiet and sweetness comes on the air. And she was making her way down along the side of the street to the city well where the people come to gather their supply of water. And as she made her way along with a little uh, crock under her arm, she was studying, thinking about the day before and the great mighty message that the rabbi had preached. And at the message that she and Joseph, her engaged husband, had spoke of on their front porch after the midday meal. As they sat there looking across the little hill to where finally the little house would be erected where they were to spend their life as far as they knew in this little building. Joseph was a carpenter and he loved his job and he loved to do things just right. And being a believer in God and know that there was someone who watched over him. 
He wanted all of his work to be just exactly right. But all this little house was a special one. The doors had to be just perfect and the closets in it because he was bringing the sweetest woman in all the world there to be his bride. And as a, as a custom would set out there and look at the little house and plan just how the roses would be at this little spot and the gate must be a little heart because they were so in love and how they were planning on doing it because Joseph being the carpenter, why well, he could take his time. And then perhaps just behind the house, there was going to be the carpenter's shop where he would do all this cabinet work to make his doors and, and the little odds and ends that was brought to him. And in that they would have their livelihood. And this Sunday, as soon as they had come out of Sabbath and sat on the front porch after the midday meal, it must have been Joseph that said, that was a striking message this morning, Mary. I am so thrilled when I hear our rabbi speak of the greatness of Jehovah. And oh, how he told us of that great mighty God that came down into Egypt and took our people out. How he opened up the Red Sea when it got in his way. And how he rained bread out of the heaven, drove the quails in out of the field, led them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. And how the children of Israel camped under this great light as they walked in the light. Wherever it went, they went also and brought them safely into the promised land. And Mary might have said something like this, yes, darling. But I want to ask you something. What happened to that great God that he isn't just as great today as he was then? Did you notice the rabbi after that wonderful message? Then alas, he said, Jehovah must have turned his back on us because that he doesn't perform miracles anymore. But Joseph quickly picked it up and said, but Mary... I believe that God is just as great and powerful as he ever was. And upon that, Mary's mother, Anna, must have come to the door and said, Are you young folks waiting for the scriptures? And handed into the hand of Mary, which passed it on to Joseph, the book of Isaiah. Joseph, opening up the scroll, began to read, and when he come to Isaiah 9 and 6, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his, the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and of his peace and his kingdom there shall be no end. And it must have been that time that Mary's heart was strangely warned. Isn't it strange how God does things? Scriptures made manifest. She said, Joseph, and he looked at her and perhaps he always thought she was the most beautiful woman he had ever saw. But then there was a certain look in her face that charmed him more than ever. While her pretty eyes looked at him like that of the dove, soft, innocent. I think that's the way a woman should look. Innocent, soft, and sweet. She said, Joseph, what was the prophet speaking of when he said, Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Who is this son and this child? That he was speaking of. Joseph looked back to her, must have been said, Well, my dear, the prophet was speaking of the coming Messiah, the hope of Israel. 
And you know, Mary, that all down through the ages since Moses, we've looked forward to that one coming. And when he comes, he will deliver us out of the bondage of these Romans, out of the bondage of our sins. And Israel will know their God, and he'll keep his word and Mary, my dear. If we don't see him in our generation, he'll surely be here in the next. But we'll look for him in our generation. All night she couldn't sleep over it. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the next morning she slept late, so she was late getting to the well. That's why the sun was up. And as she made her way down the street, it seemed like no one was around. And she was thinking on this scripture. And it's usually when we're thinking of us. I believe that that's the reason people doesn't have the victory and in their heart that they should have is because their thoughts are on other things. Let the meditation of my mind and my heart be acceptable unto thee, O Lord. I believe if we'll think on him, he'll draw nigh unto us. You remember the first Easter when Theophilus and his unnamed friend in the Bible was on the road to Emmaus? They were going along the road discussing about him, thinking of him. Oh, their hearts were burdened. Every hope seemed like that they had was taken from them, and it was Dan that a stranger walked out of the side of the bush and walked with them. They didn't know who it was. He was just a man come walking out, walked along them and said, Why are you so weary? Why are you so faint in your mind? And they said, Are you just a stranger? Knowest thou not that Jesus of Nazareth, who we hope to be the deliverer of Israel, has been crucified by Pilate, and this is the third day. Some women said they've seen a vision of angels. And then he started from the scriptures and began to explain to them the scriptures, how Christ must suffer and enter into his glory. And then when he got them in the room and closed the doors and he did a miracle, or something just like he did before his crucifixion, and they knew it was him, thinking on him. Oh, if we didn't have so many other things on our mind. You know, sometimes we'll come to church thinking about, tomorrow I've got to do this, the next day I've got to do this. When we come to church, we ought to lay aside every thought and everything of the world and enter into fellowship with Christ and worship. Meditating, worshiping in our hearts, and giving songs and praises to Him. Thanking of his goodness and what he means to us. Worshiping in the spirit. Singing spiritual songs, making melodies in our heart. Even the Bible says there's any afflicted. Let them sing psalms. Be happy. Be in meditation, always expecting God at any moment to appear to you. Are you doing it just now? Before this healing service? You people stop prayer cards waiting for the line. Are you thinking it's just a few more minutes and all my suffering will be over? Are you thinking, oh, I don't know, he might not call my card. I, it might be, oh, don't do that. Just remember, just keep it on your mind. It just be a few minutes now and you will meet the requirements that God said do. These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Keep him on your mind. And she was thinking of the scriptures. That scripture was being confirmed to her. A child is born. A son is given. And about that time she seen something flash before the little virgin. And a light, no doubt in my mind, like the pillar of fire. And standing there was a angel. The mighty Gabriel. He's a messenger to the Jews. Remember, Gabriel announced the first coming of Christ. The angel Gabriel will announce the second coming of Christ. The Bible said so. 
Now, there it frightened the little lady. And she looked at him and he said, Hail Mary, blessed art thou among the women. Thou art highly favored of God, for God is with thee. And he told what was going to happen, that she was going to bear a child and they should call his name Jesus, for he'd save the people from the sins. Now, she had a right to know that that was the right kind of a messenger. First thing, he was an angel standing there. The next thing, he told her who she was, Mary. He knew that was a sign of God down to the age. She looked at him and she said, How can these things be seen that I don't know a man? And he said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Before miracles can take place, the Holy Ghost has to come. That's what's the matter in the world today. They're denying the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why people can't believe in divine healing. They're denying the very Holy Spirit that brings divine healing. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the Most High shall overshadow thee. And that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. That's how he's coming. You don't need to know no man. God's going to do this. For with God, nothing is impossible. Oh, what that little lady had to believe. She had to believe something that was impossible. She had to believe something that never happened. Hagar, Hannah, when she was told by the priest, The Lord give thee thy desire. Well, she went home in nine months, brought the child. That was wonderful. But, and so was Elizabeth, as he said, thy cousin Elizabeth, which was called barren, is already six months to be mother, and told her that with God nothing was impossible. And she said, Behold the hands made of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. What she had to believe, something had never happened. Zacharias, the priest, the husband of her cousin, he doubted that same angel when he said, after the days of the ministration at the temple, he would go home and live with his wife, Elizabeth, and she'd bring a son, and he said, I'm too old, it can't be done. Oh, he just doubted it, and he had Abraham and Sarah to look at. He had Hannah at the temple and Eli, her husband, to think of. But that callous priest doubted God's word. But as Brother Sakarian said the other day over in the island when I saw my mother-in-law die five days before it happened, and my brother-in-law have a hemorrhage and spit blood out from his mouth, just squirted from his mouth. Brother Simon said, let us go in and pray that this won't happen. I said, it won't do one bit of good. God has already said it. It's got to happen. God, when he says anything, it's impossible for it not to happen. Therefore, when God says in the books, all things are possible to them that believe, it's got to happen. No way to explain it away. You can believe God will perform every promise that he made. Then, when she never waited, little Mary didn't. Now, she had to believe something that had never happened. But look at her little childish heart. I'm going to thank her to be just a young woman of about 18, 20 years old. She never taken the second thought. As soon as she seen and know that was the angel of the Lord that know these things and told her exactly according to the scripture she had been thinking on and told her her name. She know that messenger come from God. And the scripture that she had been thinking on was confirmed right there to her. Mary, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And the Almighty shall overshadow thee. And that holy thing that will be born will not be a man, but he'll be called the Son of God. She threw her little hands up and the tears running out of those 
Beautiful, I have said this. Hold the hands made of the Lord. Bid unto me according to thy word. She didn't wait till she was positive of this. She didn't wait till she felt like or some kind of a sensation to prove that she was to be a mother. She just took his word and that was enough. That's what God wants you to do tonight. Not wait till you feel better. Not wait till you can move your hand better or walk a good step. Not wait till the doctor says you're improving. But take God at his word and begin to believe it. That's the only way to please him. Take his word. That's the way miracles are performed. When God is tucked by his word, the impossibles are made real. When God is tucked at his word. Not question. Just give it from your mind. Behold the hands made of the Lord. While she was so happy about it, she just couldn't stand still. And nothing had showed up yet. But she knew it was going to because God said so. If Christ said these signs shall follow them that believe, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Take him at his word. Don't doubt anything. Just go right on believing. It'll be all right. God promised it. God will perform it. God watches over his word to keep it. And to answer prayer. Then she started on her way. She heard good news of her cousin, Elizabeth, an old woman, around 65, 70 years old. Her husband, the same age, around 70 or 75 years old. And she had conceived in her old age because she had believed God would give her a child. It was an honor then to have a baby. It's a dishonor now. They'd rather buy a little dog, give it the love of a child. No wonder we got juvenile delinquency. Amen. We got dog-loving mothers. Amen. That's, Amen. Oh, it's a shame. But it was an honor then and a dishonor for a woman not to have a baby. But little Mary takes out up in the, from Nazareth, up into the hills of Judea, up over that rough path. I guess Brother Oregon brought you travel that path a few weeks ago. Up over that hill into Judea to meet her cousin to enjoy his fellowship together. Because God had overshadowed both of them. What a privilege it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the anointing oil that was on Aaron's beard that runs all the way to the hems of his skirt. When people together can agree upon God still being God, God just as great as he ever was, and can assemble themselves together and worship God in spirit. Mary wanted fellowship. There's no need of going down to the synagogue because they didn't believe it. She went to somebody that had an experience like she had, and she went there to fellowship. So on her way she went to somebody that believed God was still just as great as he ever was. That's why we're having this Christian businessman fellowship in the morning where businessmen can worship together on one common ground, believing that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's why we got churches around over this city and around over the world that's preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. Because we have fellowship together. We sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Holy Ghost coming up on us and overshadowing us and powering us with gifts and signs and wonders and miracles. Why, it's the closest thing to heaven there is on the earth. There she took out for this fellowship. The heart calls for it. Up over the hills I can see her going, her little cheeks are blushing and them little eyes sparkling. As she thought, I'll keep this a secret from Joseph. I just can't wait. I've got to go. And up in the hills she went. On up into Judea, up at the house of her cousin and Mary, before she got to the house, Elizabeth, her cousin, had hid herself because she was very weary. Because little John, in the wombs of his mother, was six months and no life had showed yet. Now that's altogether uh, un- unnatural. It isn't just exactly the regular routine. Life appears in three or four months, and this is six months, and she was a little weary about it. I can see her sitting back in a room, and there she said, praying something like this, God, I waited all these years, and I believed in my heart that something was about to happen, 
There sits my husband out there, dumb, he can't speak. He keeps writing on a slate and saying, I saw an angel, I saw an angel. An angel spoke to me at the right hand of the altar. Something great's going to happen. And all of a sudden, she seen that she was to be mother. But she, the baby grew but had no life, no muscles of moving at all. Six months, all together, a sudden normal. And she looked out the window and she saw Mary coming. Her teeth shining like pearls and her eyes are just glistening with joy. And she said, I ought to know that child. And she had her rope wrapped around her, running as hard as she could. Zachariah stood in the yard and said, Oh, hail, I know who you are. Ah, you're Anna's daughter. You're Anna's daughter. Yes, that's who I am. And Elizabeth runs out. She'd been sitting in there making a little booty for the baby. Somehow or another, she believed way down in her heart that God wouldn't let her down. No matter, maybe you be setting sick. Maybe you've tried to serve God and you're setting sick tonight. But way down in your heart, something's getting ready. Oh, I wonder if the man you're in the wheelchair, if he's ready, getting thinking down in his heart, this is the night, I'll never have to use this no more. One of this lady sitting here and the one behind her is thinking the same thing. Like others, another lady sitting back there. Are you remembering that all things work together for the good to them that love God? Yes. Yes. God's trying to do something for you. And she laid the little booties down and she ran out in the yard and she grabbed Mary around the neck and began to hug her and kiss her. You know, people felt for one another then different than they do now. You know, there's not much feeling amongst people no more. No fellowship. It hasn't been too long ago. I was downtown with my wife. And there's a lady who said, Hello, Sister Branham. And I never heard her say a word. I said, Honey, that lady spoke to you. She said, I spoke to her. Well, I said, I'm sure she didn't hear you. Because I didn't, and I'm sitting closer than she was. <laughs> oh, she said, I, I smiled at her. Oh, I said, ridiculous, honey. A little old silly grin don't take the place. Hello there, how you doing? That'll never take the place. (laughs) Right. People's got so they tried to even substitute something else for a good old handshake. I was down in Florida some years ago, and we were having a great meeting in a tent out there at the Flagler Dog Tracker out that way on Flagler Street. And um, there'd been a little boy had been down there, a little preacher, David, had down there in a tent, and he'd asked me to come down and help him. He got in a little trouble, and I went down to see if I could help the little fellow. And the people were crowded so much in there that I could hardly get in and out without three or four people around to help push me in. And sick people, that's where Brother Bosworth come into the ministry. He said, that's what I prayed for since I was a boy. When he seen the Holy Spirit go out in the meeting and say, you sitting out there, you're a man that's been thrown on a horse. A few years before, and his arm broke up. Said you was riding on a horse Sunday afternoon racing. You run a fruit market down here. The horse throws you, and you've never moved your arm since. And he said, that's right. He said, straighten out your arm. Jesus Christ makes you hold in there when his arm's straight. Old Brother Bosworth went up there and said, that's what I look for. <laughs> or he said, I've watched the scriptures for that. Certainly. Then at that meeting, they said, Brother Branham, the Duchess wants to see you. I said, the what? said, the Duchess. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, well, it's a great woman. She's a Duchess. And said, she's right back behind the tent here. I said, well, why see her? What about all these sick people laying out here? And she, they said, oh, but she owns this whole thing through here. I said, well, my father owns all this whole thing across here. See? I said, well, well, I see her. I said, that's his children laying out there sick, and he sent me here to pray for them. If I can see anybody, let me see them. So when I went out, they had a woman standing there, whether you said so or not. Great big woman had enough diamonds on her hand to send the missionaries around the world 50 times. You never seen so much gold and stuff? And the woman had a, a glass in her hand, had, a, had specks on the end of them, or sticks. She held out like this and looked down through it. Uh, you know that any common sense would tell you, you're not going to see through a glass out like that. <laughs> Holding out like that. And she said, 
Are you Dr. Branham? I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. And she said, well, I was told that you were Dr. Branham, the divine healer. I said, no, ma'am, I'm Brother Branham, the servant of Christ. And she said, well, I am charmed or delighted or something like that with her hand up like this. I looked at her a little bit and I thought, that's the funniest. We don't shake hands like that in Kentucky. So I'm... I seen she wanted to shake hands with me, so I reached up and got a hold of her hand. I said, well, get it down here so I know you want to see it again. What is it? It's somebody trying to act something that they're not. That's just exactly. It's a lot of put on that has no meaning to it at all. She was no more than six foot of dirt like the rest of us. That's just exactly it. But trying to be something, you see. Like old Congressman Upshaw that was healed in a meeting after being in a wheelchair and crutches for 66 years. He always had a little slogan. He said, you can't be nothing that you hate. And that's really the truth. That, that's it, you can't be. Oh, people now, you know, you don't even know when your, your neighbor dies as you see it in the paper anymore. They don't have no more fellowship like we used to have. We're going down the street 90 miles an hour and turn the corner and stop and talk for an hour before you go home. Oh, there's something insane about the whole thing. But people in them, they love one another. They had time, fellowship, and, and to talk to each other. And Elizabeth saw her cousin and she run out and threw her arms around her and began to hug her. She said, oh, Mary, while well, the last time I've seen you, you a little freckled-faced girl. And here you are, a beautiful woman. And I, I heard that you were going with that fine boy, uh, Joseph. She said, yes, that is true, uh, Elizabeth. Well, she said, I'm so glad to see you. Well, honey, why don't you come sit down? Well, uh, Joseph has gone to fetch some water so I can wash your feet. You must be tired or bleeding. Is there anything wrong? Are you in a hurry? You seem to be so happy, but yet look like you've been hastening. Oh, she says, Elizabeth, I just can't wait to tell you. Oh, she said, you know, I'm going to have a baby. Oh, you and Joseph already married? No, we're not married yet. Well, married. I'm shocked. Oh, but Elizabeth, on the road to the well, day before yesterday morning, I was going along thinking about the scriptures that Joseph and I had been talking about the day before, and I seen a great the pillar of fire stand before me, stepping out of it was Gabriel, the angel of God, who called me by my name and told me that I'd found favor before God, that the Holy Ghost was going to overshadow me and that the power of God would be upon me and I'd have a child and he'd be called the Son of God. And said, he told me that you were to be a mother also, old age like this. And said, it's already six months. Oh, she said, Mary, that is the truth. I'm to be a mother, but honey, I am so weary. I'm already six months to motherhood, and the baby has never moved. It hasn't had one bit of life yet. And I'm just so worried about it. Oh, I hear Mary say, don't weary, because everything will be all right. That angel knows you and calls your name, too. Your cousin Elizabeth. Oh, everything will be all right. And he told me he even give me my baby's name. Oh, he did. Yes, he gave me my baby's name. He said I should call his name Jesus. Just about the time she said Jesus for the first time that that name was ever spoke by human lips, little John received the Holy Ghost and began to jump and shout in his mother's womb. Oh, my! Little John began to leap in the mother's womb for joy. If the name of Jesus Christ, the first time it was ever spoke to human lips, brought a dead baby that had never had no life, brought him to life, what ought to do in this church tonight with a born-again bunch of people that filled with the Holy Spirit? And the angel of the Lord here nightly showing himself that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That glorious name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. How that great, wonderful, immaculate name, that inscribable name of the Lord Jesus. One time I give it a challenge. 
I wanted to see what I was talking about. When I was in France, I went to Pig Alley. I didn't take anybody's word for it. I wanted to see it myself. They told me about spiritualism, and I took a couple of fellows and went up in Indiana where they had that big meeting of spiritualism. I thought it was a hoax that they were. And I went in there, and they had a table standing up. They said, no man can knock that table down. Going on like that, and the people were going on all kinds of demon powers. And they looked over there, and I said, the power of God can knock that table down. And I said, they wouldn't believe it. And they were trying to hold it down with hands, four men with their legs wrapped around, trying to pull it down. And this woman standing there doing all kinds of things and making that table walk and go around. And I, they stopped when I said this. And another minister, Mr. D'Arc, standing by me, I said, in the name of high heavens, fall. It didn't do it. I said, in the name of the holy church, fall. It didn't do it. I called all kinds of names that I could think of. That's why I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, fall. And it almost broke the legs off in the ground. In my name, they shall cast out devils. There's power in that name. It made this little baby come to life in the wombs of its mother and leap for joy. And the Bible said that John was born from his mother's womb full of the Holy Ghost. Not only that, but while he was in the womb in the Holy Ghost upon him, his own mother received the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, and gave prophecy concerning him and concerning the Lord Jesus. Don't you see, friends, that same Jesus Christ that was born of the Virgin Mary was born of virgin birth? His Holy Spirit sure tonight. He has every angel under his control. He has every power under his control. Every all powers in heavens and earth, he said, is given into my hands. Go ye therefore and teach all nations into all the world. And he, he all the power that lays within him. And he promised these promises. Just don't question him. Take him at his word. Do that while we bow our heads just a moment now for prayer. How many would like to be remembered and say, Brother Branham, let that power that made John in the womb of his mother come to life. May it waken me out of my dull senses. God bless you, boys. God bless you there. God bless you all over the building and hands up. Let that Holy Spirit waken me from this slumber that I'm sitting in. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit in such a way that my human senses will not function unless it's in the will of God. I want to be led by the Spirit. The Spirit is the sixth sense. God gave man five senses. They wasn't to control you. They're to contact, contact your earthly home. But the sixth sense, which is faith, it leads you. It controls you. Our Heavenly Father, oh, how good it is to talk of the Lord Jesus, to see how it blesses our soul, and to know tonight that there never was a man born under the heavens like that. There never was such a wonderful gift ever given to the world when God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. All that God has done for the human race, and we sit and rehearse that over in the experiences of other people in days gone by who has been in contact with heaven through the messengers of angels and the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God himself. O oh Lord, as we fellowship around these things, and know that it's not some kind of a story, just some kind of a mythical story or a superstition among people, but He is alive tonight. He's here tonight just as real as He was in Galilee. He cannot fail. His name has been given above every name in heavens and earth. All the family is named Jesus. All the powers in heavens and earth is given into his hands. And he said, go preach the gospel. These signs shall follow them that believe. Night after night, as he showed us here, that he was the same God who came down and created himself a body and talked to Abraham and done a sign of knowing that he had a wife and her name was Sarah. And know that she laughed in the tent behind him. That body was nothing but dirt. Dust and cosmic light and petroleum. 
It went right back to the dust where it come from when he got finished with it. So will our body go right back to the dust again. There's nothing in us, Lord, but that that great Holy Spirit could look down to manifest himself and to confirm his word with us to prove that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Seeing that come to pass, then, Lord, we are bringing the sick tonight to this platform to lay hands upon them and pronounce your blessing. If we should lay hands upon something that you've cursed, God withholds your blessing. But if everyone has repented of their sins and they're ready to receive me, I pray that you'll heal every person that's in divine presence tonight. Grant it, Lord. These that raised up their hands just a few moments ago, Lord, may while the meeting is going on tonight, they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit that he'll so deaden their earthbound conscience until they'll think on him, sing about him, talk about him, until he appears to them, Lord, and changes them. Granted, we commit it all to thee now, looking for your great hand to perform these things that your word has promised, and we have asked. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Do you love him? Oh, that wonderful Jesus. That Son of God that so come down and made himself man that he could catch death. Caught the stinger of death in his own flesh and pulled it out. The sting of death would never hurt us. We're free from it. Let's sing our good old song. I love him. All right, sonny boy. Let's get going. Now, everybody sing as we worship him. Message is over. The prayer line fixing to be called. Let's sing now. I love him. bow our heads real sweetly now and close our eyes and raise our hands if we really want to worship him. Saints, low now. together now with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus said when you pray that, if you have aught in your heart, forgive every man from your heart his trespass. For if you do not from your heart forgive every trespass that man has done against you, neither does your heavenly Father forgive you yours. So to enter this line, be free from sin. Confess your faults one to another, pray one for another, that you may be healed. I'm going to ask our brother now while I call the prayer line. I want to call him just one by one so that you won't make this a tear up condition. And how many here that has prayer card? Now raise up your hands. Just come across the sea. 
and he landed in another country, and a little woman come along without any prestige, and he wanted to bring her. Many years she'd had a flooding and a blood issue, and no doctors could cure her. Perhaps she'd sold all she had to pay the physicians, and they had tried hard but had failed. But she believed that she could touch his garment, she'd get well. And she went through the crowd and touched his garment. Now the Palestinian garment has an underneath garment and a robe that hangs loose. And she touched the border. That would probably be that far from me, swinging loose. And she touched the border with her finger, went back through the crowd and sat down, stood up for whatever she did. Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? Just think of that now. I remember we're talking about Jesus. Everything in the healing lines, to my opinion, has to be scriptural. Has to be on the Bible. Has to be what he was, what he done, just what he done. Then he is the one we're looking to today. He is the one that promised to be here, the same yesterday and forever. Is there any strangers in here who's never been in one of the meetings before? I guess one woman, two, two people I see. All right. So the woman touched him, went back and sat down, and she, sitting there, and Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter come up and just literally rebuked him, the Bible said. Well, I'd imagine the apostle said something like this. What do you mean by saying a thing like that? Why, you're 500 people and every one of them's touching you. Jesus said, but I got weak. Virtue went from me. And he looked around in the audience and he found the woman. And he told her her blood issue had stopped because her faith had made her well. Is that right? Now, how many of you ministers and Bible readers know that the Bible, the New Testament, said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? How many know that he, the Bible said that he is right now on the right hand of God, in the majesty on high, his literal body, sitting there, a high priest, making intercessions upon our confession, and he can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? Now his body's up there. His spirit's down here. His, bo- his spirit, God's spirit worked through that body, his virgin born son. In the fullness of God. He works through you and I as potions of God. That's why the Holy Spirit, when it come on the day of Pentecost, it broke all up that pillar of fire and divided itself in licks of tongues and set upon each one. We have to have one another. The biggest thing the devil ever got on us was when he separated us from the love of God, from one another. And we love one another. That's brotherly love. When we can get to one another, if you've got part of the Holy Ghost and i got part of it, the next man's got part of it, put us together, there's three parts. I'm three times as strong as I was with you two brothers. See? That's the way we stand. I'm a real Kentuckian. Together we stand. And divided we'll fall. That's right. We must stand that way together. Now, if Jesus Christ is the same high priest that that woman touched, but the feeling of her infirmities, and he's the same high priest, he'll act the same. He'll do the same. If you can touch him. Now, today, there's only, you can't touch him with your finger. You've got to touch him with your faith. Is that right? Is that right? Your faith is what touches him. You can't touch him with your finger because he's sitting on the throne of God. I may believe that Jesus overcome and sat down on God's throne. And promise that if we overcome, we will sit with him on his throne as he's overcome and sit down on God's throne. That's exactly what he said. All right. Then if that is so, then if you tonight are out there, here's all the prayer cards standing, and you're out there without prayer cards, and you will believe with all your heart that your faith can touch him, and you believe it, then God will answer and act just the same as a high priest did at the beginning. Do you believe that? Have you got the, all the prayer lines, the whole 50 of the prayer cards? There's out B1 to 50, you said. Okay. Now, tonight, the reason I call the whole bunch, this is not a line of discernment. This is a line of praying for the sick. See? The discernment comes each night in the meetings. But he's here just the same. Do you believe that? Sure he is. If there's not one thing done, he's still here to heal the sick. If you'll believe it. Thanks, Paul. How many out there now that is sick yet? Let's see your hands. 
If how many out there that raise your hands believe that when Jesus is here on earth, that the way he made himself known being the Messiah, he could tell the people what was their trouble and so forth. How many knows that? Knows that that's a promise of the Bible. Well, then you know that I could not be him because he's sitting on the right hand of God. But he promised the works that he did would we do also. He promised in the last days that the church would grow so close from the days of Luther, justification, days of Wesley, sanctification, days of the Pentecost, the restoration of the gifts, right into the headstone. And through that would bring forth the whole body, the resurrection of every believer. But as the, the Spirit of God grows closer, just like the shadow of my hand, the shadow gets darker and darker and darker until the, the shadow and the hand becomes the same thing. The church come from justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, now going into the very headstone and the presence of the angel of God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, so present, doing exactly the same works that he did on earth, which is bringing forth the church and the Christ to unite together. Just exactly what he promised. Now, don't let your conscience be dull now. Wake up. Now, Heavenly Father, I promise the people just to bring them through this prayer line and pray for them. But I pray thee, Father, that you will grant at least one or two people somewhere in here that have witnessed, because there's some here that has never known this, only two hands that went up, but they've never been in the meetings before. But, Lord, that might be the very two people that you're calling tonight. So to be sure that at the day of judgment, I want nothing that I have left undone. I pray thee, Father, for a few moments that if you'll send your Holy Spirit out among those people and charge their bodies as they raise their hands a while ago, that you will perform the same works here that you did like the woman at the well. When you talked to her, a man and a woman, and you told her where her secret was, what her trouble was, why she said, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. We know that when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. And he said, I'm he that speaks to you. She ran into the city and told the man, come see a man that's told me the things I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? God grant it again tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Each night I've been turning my back to the audience that you might know, and God to vindicate that the, how many knows that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. He said it. Now, what happened at Sodom? Now, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, eight souls were saved by water. Well, you see where the minority is going to be before the caps put on the stone comes back. Now, that chief cornerstone goes into the building and fits it together. Now, he said what that would be. He said what they were doing in the days of Noah, eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. But when he come to Sodom, he left that for the discernment of the church. I see there was a believer, lukewarm church member, and an unbeliever, and Abraham was out of Sodom, which means he elected and called out the church. And the one, two angels went down into Sodom. They'd done a few things, such as smiting blind, putting curse on the people. To the church member, had a meeting, called for mercy from the run out, but they didn't do it. Just like the message goes forth today. But there's one angel who stayed with the church elect. And he said to Abraham, now he was a stranger. He said, Abraham, where is your wife Sarah? Your wife, Sarah, a stranger, said in the tent behind you, said, I'm not going to keep this from you. I, personal pronoun now, I'm not going to keep this from you. But according to time of life, Sarah's going to be a young woman again. You've heard me preach on it. And she's going to go back and have this baby. And Sarah, in the tent behind the man, had never seen him, in the tent, laughed within herself. And the angel with his back turned said, why did Sarah laugh? Abraham called him Elohim, not the man sitting there eating steak and drinking milk, eating cornbread, but it was the spirit that was in him. 
Now, what was it a sign of? That the Spirit of God would dwell in the flesh of people again and show the same sign before the end time. As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now, Sodom was the one that burned. Fire fell out of the heavens and burned them. And that's what's going to happen again. It ain't going to be water. It's going to be fire. So the angel of mercy comes with the same message to warn the people, stay away from Sodom. Now you pray and see if you can touch his garment. And may he add his blessing. Just a moment, Billy. I want these people out here in the audience first. Then when I start that line, just let them know that the Holy Spirit here. Them people's got prayer cards. I'm listening to Brother Church in the Scriptures. You can't deny but what it's the Scriptures. And I need tonight. Let him speak to me. He don't know me. Let him tell me what I'm suffering with or something about me. I'll believe, Lord. I'll tell everybody there is that I can contact that Jesus Christ is soon coming, the Son of God. And he's the great healer. Here it is. There's a woman sitting right here, looking down, praying. She raised her head and looked at me. She's suffering with headaches. You believe the Lord Jesus will make you well, lady? Sitting there, a second woman in from the line, in the back of the line there. You believe that he'll make you well? You believe those headaches will stop? If you do, raise up your hand. All right, they'll leave you now. You believe with all your heart? Here, this man sitting right here with his head down praying, suffering with oppression. Do you believe that God will heal you and take that oppression away from you? If you do, raise up your hand. All right? You had more faith than you thought you had, haven't you? Now, the devil's been lying to you. Now, you know that. But he's left you now. Go on, just be happy and sing and rejoice. Have faith in God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Do you believe that? The Bible said so. This man here is sitting here believing too. But it, it isn't him. There's somebody else that's a believing. It isn't the man. It's a colored woman. She's suffering with heart trouble. She has oppression also. God will let me know who it is. Her name is Mrs. Hagwood. Where are you at, Mrs. Hagwood? Your faith has healed you. Go home and be well. Jesus Christ heals you. Does he remain the same yesterday, day, and forever? Now, I do not know those people. I've never seen them in my life. They're just people sitting there. Now, you believe all of you. With all your heart, have faith in God. We are strangers to one another, sir. We are two men that's met. Just like one time there was a man by the name of Simon came to our Lord. And now, being that you're first here in this line. If Jesus Christ will tell me what your trouble is, will you believe me to be his servant? You will. You know we're strangers, are we? So the people will always raise up our hands so that they'll know that we're strangers. I've never seen the man, know nothing about him. Now, he, 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 he had a prayer card, I suppose, is in the line. He had a prayer card, rest of them without prayer cards. But you might know the prayer card has nothing to do with it. Now, be real reverent now if you can, real quiet. Don't move around. See, each one of you is a spirit. You know that. All right, now you can put your hand down and look here. If Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then he'll do the same. Would it help you if I was able by the Holy Spirit to tell you what your trouble is? Would that help you not knowing it? I'd have to have some way of knowing it. You believe it would be Christ? Just 
by gift. It wouldn't heal you, but it would help you have faith to be healed because your healing's already done. No matter what I'd say, it still wouldn't heal you. But it would raise your faith because you know that we don't know one another. Would it help the rest of you all out there to believe? A man suffers with a blood condition, diabetes. Right. Now you believe? Would it help you if God would tell me who you are? You know I don't know who you are. Would it help you? Forrest Clara? That's right. Would it help tell you where you're from? Gilbert, Arizona. Return home now and be made well. Does that help you? Yeah, you believe God? Now let's pray. Now remember, all you people in the prayer line out there, pray now. Now don't, don't get up out of your seats, please. Be seated. Just keep real quiet. Pray. You don't know what God might do here tonight. Now, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is tremendous here right now. So just, I'm looking for something really to take place now. And now look here, all you people in the prayer line, this whole church is pledged that are going to be having faith and praying for you. Now, just come now as I pray. Now come to me. Our Heavenly Father, with this church, I pray the prayer of faith over my sister in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. I go believe you. Heaven, faith. All right, come. All right, you believe now with all your heart? You believe that God will cure the heart and the baby too? All right, then you can go to the left. Believe with all that's in you. Amen. All right, bring her on. How do you do, sister? Do you believe Jesus Christ will make you well? Our Heavenly Father, I pray for our sister along with this church that you will heal her and make her well. Through Jesus' name, amen. What does the scripture say? These signs shall follow them that believe. You, you know what it's about. You believe he heals you now? Heart won't bother you no more and that thing will go off your face and all those troubles will be, be all right now? On your road rejoice and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and be made well. Now you're an awful young woman to be nervous the way you are. But you believe in he's healed right there. You know, all right, just on your own. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus, and believe with all your heart. Do you believe with all your heart, sisters? Our Heavenly Father, I lay hands up on her. My hands represents this whole church. May she be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Have faith in If I don't say one word to you, yet you believe you're going to be healed. See, that discernment would kill me just a few minutes. I can't go through all of it, you know. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal the woman and make her heart to be well. In Jesus' name, amen. You believe, sister, he'll make you well? Our Heavenly Father, I pray for our sister that you'll heal her and make her well. In Jesus' name, amen. I go rejoicing and thank you, Lord. Amen. And you know you must believe, sister, or die. In the name of Jesus, I condemn this devil that's killing my sister. May it leave her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sister. Amen. Come, brother. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you'll heal our brother and make him well. Amen. I have faith. Don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Now, you know that I know what's wrong with you, don't you? You, you know that. But if I don't even say nothing, I want to encourage them to see. But you are tonight. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless her and heal her and make her well. Through Jesus' name, amen. Don't believe in you. You'll never be crippled up. Our precious Lord, the Bible said, who, whose writer is present, said that these signs shall follow them and believe if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. These people are believers. I'm a believer. This church is believing. We're laying hands upon them in Jesus' name for their healing. Amen. Go believe it. If you can believe, or you, you see, I say this one thing with all my heart. I wish I would have never introduced ambitions to the people. Just kept it in my own heart. See, if you ever see it one time, every person thinks that they have to do that or they're not. He makes it back. He's still here. He knows all about that. Don't you believe that? Amen. Certainly he does. Just, you believe that, sister? Sure you believe it. All right. Then that you believe it, I'm going to tell you that if you believe God with all your heart, you know you're in the shadows of death. That's right. Cancer on the liver. Yes, cancer on the liver is exactly right. Mrs. Randall, you go home and believe with all your heart and you'll be well. Do you believe that with all your heart? All right, go home and say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's right. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this man and heal him and make him well for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you, sister. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless our sister and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Father God, I pray that you'll bless our sister and heal her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Now look, sister, you're going to be well. When you go away from here, when you, well, you people come up here, when you're prayed for, you've met the requirements. Was you here last night when I said, when requirements is met? Hang on. God's there to answer. Just keep believing. Come to Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you'll heal her. Amen. These signs shall follow them. At, oh, sister, you want, you want to dodge that operation? You do? You believe that God will take that tumor out of it? Go and believe with all that. Oh, Father God, I pray that you'll heal her and make her well through Jesus Christ. Amen. Have faith and believe with all your heart. Now you coughed and went on with that asthmatic condition nearly for years and years. Do you believe he's going to make you well now? Does that help you? All right, that's it. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll help her and make her well in Jesus' name. Grant her. God grant her request in Jesus' name. God bless our sister standing here. I pray that you'll heal her in Jesus' name. God bless this one who is praying her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless this my brother, and as this church is praying for him, may the power of God be upon him in healing in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal our sister and make her well in Jesus' name. Have you accepted the healing? Believe that you'll never have it no more and you'll be all right. You do? And you can go back up to your home and believe it and get well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this man and heal him in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise Come the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll Hallelujah. heal her and make her well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I believe it. Just, just raise Hallelujah. up your hands and just say, Thank you, Lord God. Amen. Are all you all praying? Everybody believing with all your heart? What about you in a wheelchair? Are you believing? What about you over here? Are you believing? You're believing, are you, sir? You know, we talked about back there your trouble. Here, here's a man. Come here. See this man? I don't know him. He's a stranger. Is that right, sir? We're strangers. Is that right? Let's raise up our hands so people see that we're strangers. You believe God can tell me who you are, what you are, what you've done, or something wrong with you? You believe that? Would it help you? Would it help you, sir, to believe that you can go back and get well and come out of the hospital? You're feeling better. I hear what made you feel better. The very God of heaven that can use me to say the thing to this man that the Bible promised to be said. Here we are, both in our hands before each other, before God. We've never met before in life. We know of. Anyway. I look at me. All right, you have some kind of itching all over you. It's bothering you. You've had an operation. That was cancer. It was on your face. Come back again. You got your wife with you. You believe God can tell me what's wrong with your wife sitting out there? Would you believe it? Constipation. That's exactly right. You believe God knows who you are? If he'll tell me who you are, will you believe him? Yes, sir. David would. Go home, dear man. Well, I believe you. Would that help you? I believe you. I believe you. I pray that you'll help and heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll help and heal her in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal her in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless them and make her well in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this young man and heal him and make him well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm my sister. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal her and make her well through Jesus' name. Amen. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the great Holy Spirit heal you. Amen. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Holy Spirit of God heal him and make him well. Do you believe you receive? Praise the Lord. You believe him? If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Is that right? You believe it, young fella? That tummy ain't gonna bother you no more now. You can go home. Sister. It'll be all right. All right, sister. We don't know one another. You're not from Phoenix. No, you're from away from here. You're from another state, and your state to the west of you faces a large stream of water, it's Lake Michigan. And you go and believe now with all your heart, and that roaring in your head. That tummy trouble and things, 
You believe that God will make it well? Do you believe it'll be all right? You've got a loved one you're praying for? It's a daughter. She's in a mental institution. That's right. Now, see, there's no secrets before God. Go believe it and be made well. Our Heavenly Father, I pray for the woman that you'll heal her in Jesus' name. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my brother be healed for God's glory. Come, sister dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my sister be healed. Amen. Look at the people praying for you, sister. In the name of Jesus Glory Christ, may you be healed. Hallelujah. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. Come, my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be healed. The Bible said these signs shall follow them as believe. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll heal our brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Come, sister dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, may this my sister be made well for the glory of God. Amen. Come, sister, believe him with all your heart. Heavenly Father, I pray that your merciful care will be with this woman as I lay hands upon her. May the devil that's bound her all this time leave her in the name of Jesus Christ. Go believe him. All mercy of blind man. Bow your heads just a moment. You believe the Lord Jesus will help you? Yes, he will. He gives you your sight? You believe that God can tell me what your trouble is? Blindness? Weakness? That so forth, is that right? Now let's bow our heads and ask you to help you. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, give this man back his sight. May the weakness leave his body, may he be strong, may his sight come to him. We don't ask for miracles, Lord. You said a, a weak and adulterous generation seeks after such. But Lord, we know that you perform miracles, and I pray that you'll give sight to his eyes through Jesus' name. Amen. Now look this way. If you can see me now, better than you did, he can see. He has his sight. Put your hands on my nose and show people that you can. All right? Feel stronger. All right. Go off the platform. You're going to be well. I mean well. You believe with all your heart? What about some of the rest of you out there? You believe? You sitting in that wheelchair. You believe God? You've been looking at me here for a long time. You've been thinking your heart, that man's right. Is that what you've been thinking? Raise your hand if that's true. It is. You believe right now, I don't know what's wrong with you. You do that? If I tell you when you rise up and go on home and forget about it, the allergies and things will leave you then. Rise up and go on home. Believe it with all your heart. Stand up and believe God. Take your wagon and take it home with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe the rest of it? 